we are seeing three types of presentations in COVID. One is a rash present in up to 25% of cases. We have COVID toes in children. And now some people are talking about a toxic shock syndrome, which can happen in children as far as the dermatology practice is concerned. Two, I have to touch, I have to see a patient, I have to unexpose a patient. How do I do? How will I use my telemedicine to practice, to change in my practice? How do I do my dermatological procedures? Many of them are producing aerosols. And I have with me Professor J. Thomas. Professor Jayakar Thomas is Emeritus Professor of the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University, Chennai, and IMA Professor of Dermatology, New Delhi. Dr. Thomas, I was the one who started the professorship in 2000 and uh, between 2014 to 2019 when I was the Secretary General and the President of Indian Medical Association. And I've never seen experts and faculty coming early and listening to the previous speakers. I've been seeing you uh, locking yourself for almost like an hour and uh, listening to other uh, uh, speakers. Thanks, uh, thanks and hats off to you. Ladies and gentlemen, and my dear viewers, I present to you, Professor Thomas. Thank you very much, sir. First of all, for the nice words of introduction, and then for having invited me to join uh, an erudite group of specialists. Now, coming to the point straight away about dermatological practice post-lockdown. I must confess that the dermatologists do not have any position statement in place. But definitely, although we do not have it in place, we have the right perspective about it. A dermatologist has to be just not active alone, but I would say you have to be proactive and most provocative in whatever you want to do. There's precious little, however, that a dermatologist could contribute towards treatment of this condition. But definitely there are certain points that would help us to make sure that as you rightly pointed out, it was not post COVID, but post lockdown, where a lot of precautions have to be taken because the COVID-19 is still around us, but we should take as much precautions as possible. I put it here in simple terms. First of all, now we as dermatologists can well afford to make appointments only in the form of telephonic conversation. So we make first an appointment and make sure that the patient comes at the time and the date of provided to the patient. Every patient should be treated as a triage. Now this is important, but the thing is, as a practitioner, single-handedly, a person cannot do it. For me, it becomes easy because I have my front office staff and my staff, our uh, paramedical staff do a wonderful job in this. But still, I have to make sure that they're doing the right thing. So, so a triage in terms of looking at the patient as soon as they enter to make sure the temperature is normal and proper history taking, whether they had recent uh, pharyngitis, febrile pharyngitis seems to be the earliest symptom complex of COVID-19. And as soon as the patient enters, or even before the patient enters the waiting room, make sure that he or she sanitizes the hand, washes the hand well. I'll come to sanitizing a little later. And then we have the self-declaration form. It has to be in vernacular, obviously. It can be in English also, but better to have it in the vernacular also so that people understand what they're going to sign and what they're going to declare. The next point which I said is limited number of accompanying persons. Now, so far I have not limited at all. I allow the father, the mother, the grandfather, grandmother, paternal grandparents, maternal, all of them come, particularly when it's a skin problem in a child. But now we have to start stopping that and only one person, either the father or the mother, whoever you find is going to be uh, more sane in accepting the advice that we give. And even if it's not a child and an adult, maybe the next of kin, the spouse could accompany or the eldest child could accompany and make sure that this, what uh, Professor KK said as physical distancing is important, at least a meter distance between two people. 
and stay in well ventilated room. Now, this is a tough proposition, I know, because most of us are practicing in air conditioned room. It's time that we turned off our air conditioner and open the windows so that we get fresh air inside and the room gets well ventilated. Now to go further, to go further, just what I put in figures, this is more in words, where you have to isolate symptomatic patients right at the entry, limit the number of accompanying persons. Now that is from the patient point of view. Now what about from my staff? I definitely have to protect my staff also, provide gloves, provide masks for them. The whole PPE set cannot be given, of course. If possible, well and good, maybe surgeons could do it or bigger um, uh, medical physicians can take care of that. But my staff will also do in return for me, making sure that this physical or social distancing is being maintained. The next point would be enough workspace. A 10 by 10 room is not going to be enough. Unfortunately for me, I have a larger consulting room. Now I plan to, if the lockdown is going to be lifted, I plan to go and make them into two rooms. So that by the time I see one in one patient and go to the next, the first room could be sanitized. That's out of an arrangement. But if you can't afford it, of course, you have to minimize the time that you spend with the patient can't listen to all the entire stories that the patient has. History, yes. Story, no. Doctors should wear a N95 mask wherever appropriate. And also the patients and their accompanying person should wear masks when they come. And after they leave, disinfect the area, particularly the table, those which are in. And you find sometimes little children who come, they take the paperweight, they carry the stethoscope, the flash lamp that is on your table. So keep them all away. Don't use them or keep them away in such a place so that it is not accessible to any of the accompanying people. And I have to tell you very, very frankly, now after the post lockdown or after post COVID, people are going to run short of money, which means you have to be very, very careful not only with your belongings, but with your money, your wallet, everything. So patient people might come in the guise of a patient and knock away things, so one has to be very careful. Now, what is the new normal? What is the new normal? What we have been doing all this while is normal. We are talking about something new normal. Plan ahead to work with reduced healthcare workforce. I started already asking only one third of my staff to start coming from the 4th of May if the lockdown is going to be lifted. So you come in shifts. I don't have three shifts, I have two shifts. So I tell them you come in shifts and help me out. This regarding cosmetic procedures and dermatological surgery, I'll come a little later, maybe a minute and a half later, where I'll tell you what is really to be done and what surgical conditions can be taken. Other non-essential appointments can be deferred or start using online or what we call as teledermatology. Now, I've been handling teledermatology from the year 2007. Now, telemedicine has become the buzzword in the last two or three months, but for me, it's a very, very old word, and I'll tell you how in the subsequent uh, slides. Now, the presentation also includes lesions not qualified as elective that cannot be postponed for weeks to be evaluated on a case-to-case -case basis. Now, we cannot group them. That's why I said we are lacking a position statement. Now condition A2, A, B, C, D, E, F cannot be taken as those which are elective and others which are as urgent cases or emergency cases. So we'll have to really work on a case-to-case -case basis and surgical. A patient with psoriasis might come with acute appendicitis, might need a surgery. Now I'll have to decide to tell my surgeon friend Yes, go ahead and not, depending on the site of the lesion. The lesion need not necessarily be in the right iliac fossa. The lesion might be in the back where the surgeon or the anesthetist is planning to give a spinal. So those are situations where we have to be careful about in the post-lockdown period. But for that, we are not all that very, very 
obvious about that, but now we have to be careful. Now, surgeries in dermatology practice, those which are triage. I would like to say that there's real no surgical triage in dermatology. However, if a lesion which has to be excised is compromising with the normal life pattern, just over the eyelid, where the vision could be compromised, just at the entrance of the nostril, where breathing can be compromised, those things could be taken as urgent. Other conditions can be easily postponed, easily postponed. Here I've tried my best to give some conditions which need immediate care. As I told you, a rapidly growing lesion, compromising one's lifestyle, a blistering skin condition like pemphigus vulgaris or pemphigoid. Even right now, a pemphigoid patient is under my care on teledermatology consultation a mole that is changing in size, shape, and color, rapidly expanding rashes, rashes particularly drug reactions. Now these need immediate care. A toxic epidermal necrolysis or Steven Johnson syndrome need immediate care. Other conditions can certainly wait. All the fanciful conditions where you want to use Botox, Botox to remove some of the wrinkles, Botox to remove the sweating on, in your armpits, all that can wait, all that can wait. Similarly, filler injections. Now we have quite a number of uh, cine stars coming for us. I'll tell them all that can wait, particularly lasers. I want to warn about two conditions. There will be a lot of general practitioners listening to this. Lasers, another thing is what we call as peels, facial peels. They should not be undertaken. They should not be undertaken because lasers are those which can produce aerosolization. Even nebulizing, we are saying, no, why should we use this? It's not at all urgent. And also facial peels. The patient is going to use a mask, and where are you going to peel? You're going to peel over the mask only. So let's be very sane in what we decide and very reasonable in what we offer to the patient. Continuous care as review, not as first appointment, but as review could be done by teledermatology. I always practice that. I've been practicing that for the past decade and a half, but not first consultation. Now here are some uh, therapeutic tips. Those patients are biologists. Now, rheumatologists and dermatologists are two groups of patients, of uh, physicians who use a lot of biologics. Now, when you're using a biologic and a patient tested to be positive, no, stop the biologic. The patient is biologic and is not tested. You can continue the biologic, but again, on a case-to-case -case basis. If the patient is not on biologic therapy and you're planning biologic treatment, you have to be careful. Again, you will have to make sure that the benefit largely outweighs the risk. I want to emphasize the term largely. It should largely or, or really outweigh the risk that I involve. In other words, the best, the benefit to risk ratio should be very, very high, be very, very high. So certain drugs, particularly a drug like isotretinoin, which everybody is so worried about, particularly giving it to girls, even in giving it to boys, you know, we have to be careful for acne vulgaris, certain uh, different forms of side effects are known, but in girls, they're not supposed to fall pregnant. So that we have to give the proper counseling advice, best to be avoided, best to be avoided during the reproductive age group. But if you're going to give and you are sure that there's no risk of being pregnant, then you could even give it for maybe four months or six months and then ask the patient to come or then follow up by teleconsultation. And this is what I tried to tell you earlier about the lasers. Laser surgeon dermatology is a potential source of airborne contaminants. They could really cause aerosolized destruction of the cell, not only lasers, even radio frequency. You are destroying a cell by applying a certain amount of heat or current or whatever it is. You're causing death to the cell. You're causing a blood to come out, whereby you can involve aerosolization, the blood leading on to spread of infection. The teledermatology has become the magic term and is a very, very favorite term for me because I practice teledermatology in a big way. I think the whole country knows it. I've been the international president of the Society of Teledermatology. 
dermatology is one subject which is amenable to teleconsultation because it's a visual specialty. And teledermatology is nothing very special about it. I would say it's a hybrid between clinical dermatology and information and communication technology. You make use of ICT, information and communication technology and practice dermatology, that is teledermatology. And even in that, you have two forms or maybe three forms, real time, where the patient comes to you, maybe on a Skype call, or now you have a WhatsApp call, <clears throat> or you could have a third party admin who will be handling that. So these are the ways by which the second possible way is where it's stored and forward. Patient takes a photograph and forwards it to the physician to make a diagnosis, or it could be a combination of both, which you call as hybrid, which you call as hybrid. Now the proven role of teledermatology in dermatologic practice, several journals have come out with this. The Telemed Journal in 2019, just less than a year ago, have said that the model increased access to specialty care and enabled patient-centered, safe and effective management of psoriasis. Another, the Indian Dermatology Online Journal, as clear as they said, that unnecessary travel, unnecessary waiting time, unnecessary referrals, and it's very, very cost-effective, particularly in malignancies or cancers of the skin. That's why when I used to make a presentation, say, teledermatology has made geography into history. Geography meaning the distance between two places has become a thing of the past. It's no longer geography, it's become history. The geography becomes history, and we are able to see our patients, treat our patients very carefully. Here's a good friend of mine, Dr. Anne Burdick from the US. She was in India in the year 2008 when I conducted the World Congress of Teledermatology. And these are the words she said. The teledermatology train is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Get on board, get out of the way, or get run over. There's no way that you could leave it. Best thing is to get on board and practice it, teledermatology. Now, what do we advise a patient during these dark days and during these trying times? Monitor for any new skin lesions, as Professor KK told us. There are already three things which they say they could get an erythematous rash, or you could get what is known as a toxic shock syndrome-like condition, or you get what is known as a COVID toes, a purpuric rash in the toes, but lots of other things do occur, sir. Like you can get uh, varicella-like lesions, you can get urticaria-like lesions. You can get libido reticularis. That is what has been described. I have seen a case of libido reticularis myself in a COVID-19 case. So these are things which we have to look into. So monitor for any new skin findings. People with open and irritated skin should minimize the use because we keep on saying use sanitizer, sanitizer, soap and water. Now sanitizer, soap and water is really useful. Sanitizers are better than nothing. That's all I could say. Because they are really not going to remove everything. So they're better than nothing. Soap and water is important. But when a patient has got dry skin, patient has got dry skin, frequent washing of the hands with soap and water, you have to be careful because that can cause chapping of the skin. And chapping of the skin will really cause more injury. So, so such individuals, during the post-lockdown period, tell them to wash with soap and water and immediately apply a moisturizer. No, not to. I put here liberal use of moisturizer. Liberal is not required. As I put in the last picture here, a small pea-sized amount. But what is important is work it on to the entire skin of the hands, not only the palmar aspect, also the dorsal aspect, nail, the paronychial area, and the tips. That's very, very important when you're using a moisturizer. Advise the patient correctly on that. The frequent hand washing using soaps and regular use of alcohol-based sanitizers in the current coronavirus outbreak can lead to dry and cracked skin. And what I told you just now are some of the precautions that have to be taken. So thank you very much to all of you who have been here listening to me. Thank you very much to the patrons and supporters of the SMEG. Thank you very much, Professor K.K. Agarwal. So, uh, uh, Dr. Thomas, when we talk about uh, urgency and non-urgency, now do you think for a lighter mood, I'm going to take uh, talk something which is different, that we are going to wear a cap 
so people won't mind now uh, doing the whitening the, and white hair or black hair is not going to make a difference people are going to wear a, a mask all the time so no lipstick no makeup with that and they're going to use a shoe cover so it doesn't matter whether you are using a high sandal or people are not going to watch your sandals so therefore all the dermatological conditions with tight shoes will go away and in any way now the, the time will go away that you won't like to go for a cosmetic surgery unnecessary because you will say you will accept you will live with simplicity accept the thing as they are and the situation is going to change certainly sir i agree with you 100 percent and even more than that if it's possible because this is not the time when you must be looking at your lifestyle you already miss your patients you miss your companions you miss your friends uh, there's one thing which I want to tell and I missed, keeping your money safe during this period. Because even the currency which the patient gives will be infected. So the best thing is to use plastic boxes, not wooden or metal boxes, plastic boxes, put the currency inside, keep them like that, use them after three days. On the next day, put it in another box. The third day, another box. Fourth day, you take the first box, take the currency out, use it, and then restart. That's one thing which I thought uh, I should tell. Absolutely, that's what uh, is a recommendation all over, including in the mask, they're doing the same thing. High dose oral steroids for bullous diseases. That's the question. What about continuing steroids in patient who needs uh, steroids? No, sir, continuing steroids. Again, you have to look at the risk benefit ratio because any immunosuppressor, whether steroids, or cyclosporine, or immunomodulators like methotrexate, azathioprim. Um, safe drugs would be in for, uh, I'm taking psoriasis as an uh, example for this, you know. Acetretin is a very, very useful drug. Epremilast, these two drugs will not interfere with the immunity of the patient. So you could use these safely. Taking psoriasis as the prototype. I'm uh, out of box thinking that. Uh... Uh, I've been reading about uh, COVID and they say this is immunoinflammation and it will, because it is causing acute phase reactants are high. Whenever you find acute phase reactants, you say it's not inflammation, it is immunoinflammation. And it is not only immunoinflammation, it is also immunothrombotic disease. Yeah. Because it is causing a microthrombosis. So, uh, so I'm, I'm interested in... Uh, I, all people like you to ask simple question. I'm asking this question to all rheumatologists. The people who are on steroids and people who are on uh, methotrexate, they may be at a lower risk of getting COVID complications because they have already on an anti-inflammatory uh, medications. On one side, immunity is becoming low. So there are more chances of getting secondary infection. Uh, but the, the cytochrome uh, uh, Tom may be less in those cases. So, uh, I, I would like to uh, just uh, explain a little bit on that. The two conditions, one is auto-inflammatory conditions, other one is autoimmune conditions. Now we must certainly, the line between these two groups of conditions is very, very narrow and very, very uh, uh, faintly made out. So we're talking on one side on auto-inflammatory conditions and the other side on auto a immune conditions. So in autoimmune conditions, you don't use steroids. In auto-inflammatory conditions, like what you said, your toxic shock syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, Stephen Johnson syndrome, there you might have to continue to use a steroid. Now I'm asking you, a patient is on psoriasis, he's on methotrexate. Suppose yes. you are saying I'm giving him 15 to 20 milligram of a weekly methotrexate, yes. or he's on oral or of injection. Now, do we have a data anywhere? It will be worth, it will be worth seeing the data do patients with psoriasis, how do they behave with COVID? No, they could be continued. They could be continued and no, no, no. I'm talking about it. Do they end up into a complications or not? Do they develop no, no, mild no. COVID? Or there's, no, there's no, there's no I data. Know, I know there is no data, but this is worth looking at because the lateral thinking is that uh, drugs like methotrexate may even help for uh, prevention of a cytokine storm. Yes, because, so there are lots of things like that. Yes, so there are lots of things. For instance, uh, I thought that BCG helps even hydroxychloroquine, which you are giving, is anti-inflammatory because it is not only because you are giving hydroxychloroquine. 
It's a steroid sparing drug. It's an anti-inflammatory agent. Like uh, we, I was just trying to draw an analogy. BCG, they feel, is a good protectant against uh, COVID-19. If BCG is a good protectant, why can't we use rifampicin? Why can't we use a drug like Dapsone, which are all less expensive than what we are trying to look at? Yes, because there is now a anti-leprosy uh, vaccine that is Mycobacterium W. A trial is going okay, on. Yeah, they are finding it may have some effect with that. So, so uh, uh, what about earlier? Uh, how do we uh, how do we have a dermatological manifestations of COVID? When to suspect COVID? If the patients come basically with a dermatological condition, uh, the Italians the Italians feel that the COVID toe sign is very very pertinent, but I'm not too sure about it. In India, at least two or three places we have been able to look at this levido reticularis. But again, that's not a constant finding. Reticulate libido, uh, which is due to a type of purpuric reaction only. Then, even acute urticarial lesions, simple things, chickenpox like lesions, blisters are noted. So, one thing is clear, dear viewers, that corona is a proteon manifestation, it's a disorder of the plasma in the blood, it causes acute phase reactants. It causes involvement of the blood. And with that, it can present anywhere, to any speciality, to any specialist. In today's date, anybody who loses his life or anybody who presents with any symptom in any part of the body, which is unusual, which is for the first time, which cannot be explained, or which is persistent, rule out COVID. And remember, next time you go to somebody's house, when the lockdown is over, ask him, I hope, your house is COVID friendly. And when you call somebody, ask, him, ask, you, ask and you say, that please come to my house. My house takes all COVID precautions. And therefore, all the doctors sitting here, please start contacting your patients. Put down a list and put a big banner outside that we take the following precautions and we make sure that you and me are safe together. First, your safety than my safety. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thomas, to be here with us. It was a wonderful. Uh, 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 do you have a question? So there is one, uh, two questions I'll take before I finish it off. And the one question they says is, I have acne, and in the acne, how do I uh, take care of my face, and how do I differentiate acne with the uh, other types of uh, COVID infection? No, acne with COVID has got no connection. I'll just I'll give you acne, and then second is a nail fungus, and the third thing is should we take hydroxychloroquine? These are the three questions. Acne. Acne has got nothing to do with COVID nineteen, to the best of my knowledge, and I think it can be treated the way that we can all. And I mentioned specifically about the anti-acne drug, isotretinoin, which can be used with caution. Fungal infection of the nails, you can boldly treat them with antifungal agents, uh, particularly when you know that there is an immunosuppressed state, you can treat them with etraconazole, that would be the best for three weeks to treat them. Uh, or you treat once weekly for three months, you can treat them that way also. And the third question was on, Hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Big question mark, sir. Big question mark. Anti-inflammatory okay. agent, steroid sparing agent. That's about all. That big question. rash, arterial rash in COVID during fevers and sore throat. It, it has been it has been documented. Arterial rash. The Italians are the one who have done the maximum studies on skin manifestations of uh, COVID-19. And they have described that together. Do you think that the future is going to come when a, a, a well-educated person who can afford in the private sector, he will have his GP arrange a Zoom call. And if he is COVID positive, and he's going to have all the specialists on the Zoom call simultaneously pay everybody, because it can present anyway in any, any, any different format. And he says, I want to have a, just a people go to the lab, na, sare test kar do. do all the tests. Now he will say, get me all the consultations of all specialists and they let them evaluate me and come out. This will be a funny and a different type of a scenario 
I think somebody is going to do that. Oh yes, they will do it. If, if there are insane people who are willing to spend money like that way, why not accept the money? We can. And uh, of course, nice to see that the dermatologist is becoming a formidable person amongst all the specialists where we can detect COVID-19 and other conditions all the while. So thank you, Jacket Thomas, and thank you, thank listeners, you, for for Corona this Namaskar to you. performance by you. And I say Corona Namaste to Dr. Thomas as well as to our viewers. We will be thank back you. after a minute with another session. Corona Namaste. <laughs>